Yeah, that's uh, Bach. That's organ, Pisa de Orge, G B eh, V W five seventy two, and those are the Klipsch Heresy fours. Which, wait, didn't your dad have a set of these? No, no, no. Your granddad had a set of these back in like the seventies. I mean, look at it. Look at his little box on the floor. It's it's not a small box. It's still bigger than my subwoofer, but it's a little small box on the floor. Look at it. We peel off the uh, grill. Oh, they magnets. That's kind of cool. I didn't know they did that back in the day. Oh, look at that. 12 inch and some horns. All right. I'll give you a hundred bucks for them in the yard sale. Oh, these are not an old set. Oh, they're a new, brand new. New? Like how new are we talking? Oh, like just came out last year, new. Oh, okay. Um, well, they're going for a vintage look. I could see the hipsters lined up around the block to pick up their $500 set of heresy for how much? $3,000. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, I see it's beautiful. Yeah, I do. I love this. Is, looks looks great. Affected by the cold, you say? Because the weave will change if it's cold. Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to put this back on now. Um, let me spend a little more time with them and I'll see what I like. Let's see if I see if it's, yeah, okay, I'll see if there, any buttons click. That was me. That was me, by the way. It was a reenactment of me at, I think it was RMAF. Not this last year, like two years ago. So maybe these came out a little bit longer than that. But. <laughs> I put shuffle back on if you don't mind. This is a brand new, newly designed, newly built in America, which doesn't matter to like 60% of my audience, but in America built set of Klipsch Heresies. Rear port, uh, I'll lean it forward. I'm not really worried about damaging these for a reason I'm going to divulge in a second. Big old port. I can fully almost fist that. At the bottom, 12-inch uh, driver in the front, as you did see. This, I forget what finish is on this. Walnut? It's walnut tubers? I think it's walnut. Heavy bastards. And they're designed with a base. If, you can, if I get down on the hands and knees... There is a angled wedge base of wood that I've added furniture sliders to because they're also it's impossible to move these. And here we have paper cone, paper surround, paper dust cap, compression horn, and a little baby tweeter with a, with a waveguide. And you can see it's got this orange peeled paint that doesn't look super high end, but it's very, very vintage. This whole speaker is, I love the, the roughness around there for hold to hold that. <laughs> it says heresy here. And this is the fourth revision of the heresies. And I don't know the full history. I'm, I had the webpage open. I could read the full history of the heresies. But if you go into the heritage line of Klipsch speakers, this is the bottom tier. Three grand for the bottom tier heresy heritage speaker. And I own this set. It took me a bit. It took me a, a couple days, and then a couple days after that, and then a couple days after that, of sitting here in quarantine going, you know what? I can't live without these. I can't live without them. Now, in their current form, they are non-existent. Like I would just walk past this. This is like any other piece of furniture in my house. In fact, my living room looks like something's wrong. You've all been looking at my living room for many years with me and it's like something is missing. And that's because these speakers are so low to the ground. They are designed from a time. See, they, they, they did a couple things. They took the design from back in the Dizay and said, okay, people always need to put them up on wedges. It's, Permanently install wedges in the bottom. Done. And you know those drivers? I think it used to be uh, maybe just a two-way, a 12-inch of that. And it was probably in a sealed box. Probably. I'm not 100% sure. Probably in a sealed box. 
Let's make it a, a ported box and we'll make it a three-way. We'll, we'll break it apart. And then we'll put 2019's or 2018's best fucking audio engineers on the crossover designs and modern driver takes and better horns and we'll just we'll just go all out. And we'll build it here. It will, I think, where do they build this? Arkansas? Are they building Arkansas? I think they're building Arkansas. And then we'll sell them. And we're gonna make them exactly what they should cost. Because this is a line that you're not supposed to just go to Best Buy and see there. Although I don't know how Magnolia works. And then you get to them and you, you they start showing them off at the shows and I had no interest in them at all. Because they're over there on the floor. But they do add like, it, they add a hipster air of class. If I had just a turntable over there, and then these speakers like on the left and right of a cabinet, and I wasn't even facing them, if they were just on the floor over there in my workshop where I work on vintage motorcycles, only Indian motorcycles is the only thing I work in my workshop, while my girlfriend weaves baskets, and I'm upper class San Francisco, gotta have this, this they're fucking perfect. But, See, I have a belief. I had a belief before I bought these, before I said, hey, I want to own these to Klipsch. Uh, I had to do some research. I had, to, had to, to whip out the science. I don't understand what was making them sound so good. What, well, how could, I, how could I harness this? I love these metal binding. I love the binding posts and the ports nicely. They don't have that much low end though. So I'm like, they don't really do low end. But the, I can feel it. I could feel from staring at them on the floor. <laughs> they knock really well. They knock. They got like that kick drum knock because, well, they're a bass cabinet. But a bass cabinet is not a subwoofer. And I'm not running the subwoofers right now. I'm just running these. And they're super efficient. This is the first time ever that I've had to take my mini DSP, which controls the output to these crown amplifiers. And I've had to take it and turn it down. Usually I leave that at zero and then the subwoofers have to go down to level it. Not on these. And these, the subwoofers had to go up to zero. These speakers are down 14 decibels. 14 decibels from where I normally go. That's how efficient they are. So you could run them off of like a Crowley turntable for like $81. They, they run off anything. They don't need my crowns. They, they could run off a tube amp. I was tempted to bring my um, audio valve Solaris in here and just run them off that for eight watts. Eight watts would kill you. But yet I sit here, currently the owner of these, going, why? Why do I own them? I mean, they look, they look, they, they got a look to them that just, it feels old, but you hear them and you know, you know, you know there's a the potential there for something great. And I think I could give this review with them entirely on the floor and entirely covered and it would be fine. It'd be fine. And you, I could tell you all about how I love the craftsmanship and how, you know, it's it just the, the, maybe the, the, uh, the finish is a little soft, I'm scratching it a little bit, but, but there's care and modernness to them. But but that wouldn't be the full story. That's not the reason I bought. I didn't. I, I did not buy these speakers from their current performance on the floor. It it took um it takes a little bit of work, a little bit of effort, and a little bit of persistence. But then once you've hammered at them a while, they become something that is well unbeatable in my current living room whether it'll be unbeatable in your current living room, or if you're even willing to partake in the process, well, that's entirely up to you. So why don't you sit back, think about what you're seeing now, and tell me. So, some things have changed now. Um, to address the three main flaws of the heresy, actually four, but there's really three main ones. Because these speakers, like I said previously, are amazing. They're absolutely stunning. However, 
the OCD audio file that lives inside of Zeos Pantera could not stand several things. Number one, knee height. Fantastic looking on the floor. But no matter how much you angle a speaker upwards, it is never up. When you listen and something singing, it's, 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 it's there. You live in the, on, I couldn't do it. That's how I'm imagining most people buying these are going to run them. And so I wasn't gonna not, I, I use them for about a week solid on the ground, like you saw. And the itch got too great just to know, just to know like, all right, they sound real good. But now what if I took, and these by the way, are, uh, what are you? Air pulse stands. These are Edifier air pulse stands. They're little shorties, 24 inches tall, 25 inches tall. And they just happen to fit into the box structure on the bottom of this unit. And so I was able to get them up and they're relatively stable, relatively stable. And as soon as I put them from the floor to these stands, something changed. I cared so much more about how they sounded and I wanted to hear them more and louder. And that's when the other issue came into it, which was they really need a subwoofer. Really need a, like they really incredibly need subwoofers. Plural is better, singular will work. Because, I'll take this off again here. That 12 inch is not designed for bass. They put us, they put a port back here, a nice big fat, you know, you could, looks like a book return slot at a library. They put a port back there, but when you really get into it and look at these speakers, that isn't the surround you'd find on a subwoofer or even uh, most modern speakers. That is a wrinkled, rippled paper surround. So it's like, it's like a bass cabinet for a guitar. That is not a low end driver. That is a mid bass driver. And as soon as you, through whatever acts it takes to get this done, can integrate a subwoofer to take over everything, and I'm not joking, 65 hertz and below, then this doesn't have to concern itself with it. And then what you're left with is not one, but two 12 inch front firing mid range, mid bass, to then accompany the perfect ear level dual compression horns and super tweeter up here. And you understand the capabilities of this speaker. However, we're gonna go into another however. I'm gonna take both covers off. You like the lights? I'll explain how I did the lights in a bit. Hi, boopers. This is Chewbacca. She's very, very calm. She's wondering why I'm starting this at the beginning and then I'm gonna to go to the end. It's just editing, baby. I do it sometimes. So now you've got on stands, which by the way, I believe 100% clips you're watching this. I'm assuming you are. Offer a $500 pair of custom made heresy stands. I mean, there's $3,000 speakers. There's nothing that could stop you from just taking a, like a piece of wood and just putting a wider base than that, because it is a narrower base. The base to that is narrower than the speaker. But make the exact same size base with a column that either goes up like I have it, or that can actually go around the base and just makes it look solid. People will buy it. The reason these go on the floor is because that's the only place you show them. And the improvement by lifting them up and having them become actual speakers is why I own them now. So step one, get them off the floor. Now it's a tilted base, which is like, it's, that means you can't just put a table over there. If you put on the table and it'd be a tilted base, it'd be a big tilted thing on a base. So not that. You have to do something sort of along these lines. I'll link to the uh, stands in the description. Next, add the subwoofers, you have to. If you're only listening to classic rock on vinyl and it's just, that's it. It's just, you know, buh, strumming if you, a bass guitar. You're fine. Cause again, they look like a guitar amp speaker, but if you're actually playing something modern and prodigy omen, which we started out with is not exactly like the ultimate pinnacle of sound, but anything with more 
Glitch Mob. All right, another good. Ah, oh, Tom Pet Petty and the Heartbreakers. I'm gonna get copyright caught. I know, I'm not gonna make no money on this video. It's fine. Into the Great Wide Open. <sighs> These are the best two-thirds speakers ever. Except there's another problem. Well, I remember I said there was four problems. I'll get to the one that's real silly. Um, there was some dirt on here, and I went to clean it off with my fingernail, and I actually dented the, the veneer. This veneer is real veneer. That's real wood. And if you put your fingernail against it, you could scratch it. Like there's like something there that looks like I should clean it off. Don't. Clean it with a clean it with a beautiful rag. So the real veneer being so real means you have to be real careful because there's not there's no gloss. Like even my ohms have a glossy coat. This is just wood. Anyway, to the final final fix, and I did an entire video on my other channel for this because it's the video where I wrote on the whiteboard I described how I. Uh, set up my living room and that sort of came as a result of these speakers so here's the main problem in the first part of this review when i had them on the floor i had them set up absolutely stock i had uh these installed where are they these are the bridges that go between the high and low terminals in the back and these bridges mean that you could use one amplifier and it'll power the 12 inch and the upper horns. The upper horns are separate. When you take these out, you could separate the upper horns. And well, Zeos, why would you need to do that? Why would you need to separate them? Why would Zeos, why are you biamping these? Is, is, that, is that an SMSL? DA8S? For the horns? Yeah, yeah it is. Here's the problem. Here's the, here's the, the biggest flaw of these speakers is not that they're on the floor. It's not that they're lacking in low end. Everyone could expect to have to add a subwoofer if you really want some impactful bass. Although these miss so much low end that I think it's actually a fucking requirement. The problem comes in terms of efficiency. These are crazy efficient speakers. And that's what happens when you put a 12 inch driver and Horns, horns that amplify that way. Chewbacca's going away now. <sighs> the problem came down to volume balance. Or how could I put this? When you play these speakers at, you know, audio show levels, you know, you don't want to bother the door, room next door and you're playing things off a turntable so you don't want to shake the room. They're fine. They're perfect. They are exactly worth $3,000. You stand up next to your cabinets. You'll be the happiest little boy in the, in the fair. But you bring them into my living room, personally my living room, and you start turning them up and you're like, yeah, I wanna hear what these things can do. Because efficiency, because everyone can do that. These speakers are so efficient that even if you have like an 80 watt per channel, old used home theater in a box receiver, you can crank these. The problem with cranking them is these horns are more efficient than that 12 inch. So as I was raising the volume, the horn was getting louder and the bass driver was getting louder. But then we hit this certain magic point where all of a sudden these horns were all you heard and there was nothing coming out of that. And it was like, oh God, it felt like old Klipsch, like when Klipsch was just treble murder and no one could deal with it. So there's no way to fix that unless you can rebalance the amplification between the 12 inch and the horns, which is what I've done. And I highly recommend this. If you are looking at these speakers and you have any intention to play them louder than just like a gentle breeze, and you can tell this by, we could set them up by default first and then play with this option. But when you turn it up higher and higher and higher and that horn starts getting more and more and more and you're like, oh man, I kind of miss the 12 inch. Like it would be so much louder if that 12 inch was louder. Buy amplify it. Not by wire it, not by wire, 
not the same amplifier with two wires running it, separate complete systems. And in my certain case, I actually have a different DAC for the treble versus the, these are still running the 12 inch. And I'm gonna swap my whole living room around when I'm done with this review and make it so that instead of this being a mono block, this is now gonna be a stereo amplifier again and handle the 12 and the horns and the 12 and the horns and then it'll be fine. But here's the thing. You don't have to spend a lot of money to do what I'm saying. It's not, and this is not a, a killer thing. That, oh my God, Zio said you gotta do all this stuff. You can get these speakers, you can put them on the floor and you can listen to them and you could know very well. You just spent $3,000 on what looks old and it looks old, but that is as modern as it fucking comes as far as the science behind those drivers and the crossover components and oof. The only thing is they couldn't beat the physics of that 12 inch just it can't it can't actively get as violent as it needs to to keep up with the, the horns so what happens when i put on a separate bi amplified source well luckily for me i'm using a mini dsp nano digi so i have digital control of eight separate channels the subwoofers are on one and i can just turn them off the 12 inches are now on one and i can just turn them off and the horns are on another and i could just turn them off or up or down or change the phase. So what I've determined is these need a, I'm gonna just, I didn't actually take out my, my measurement device to measure, but I'd say like four solid decibels less when you're getting into the, ooh, that's kind of loud. You're, you're really, if I, Chewbacca went into a little hot, right? You're in your bunker? You in the sound bunker now, baby? Okay, good. When we are at this level, and we are at a level right now, like that is a level unattainable with them just on the floor and then their own thing with the thing. Because this particular setup in my mini DSP has lowered those horns, which allows me to push more power to the 12s. And then we have subwoofers coming in and clearing out the bottom. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, I have now purchased these speakers. That's why they own them. I own you now because as much as I love my ohms and I love you ohms They're an eight inch and they're omnidirectional So they do their thing in this space and they wash against the wall and you get like a, a single tweeter That's sort of like in the middle and I've discussed this with like the Swan M3As which were the best directional speakers I've ever heard and probably still, as far as like whole package, don't need to do anything, just put those in a room and you're done. Those are probably still the ones. They're not on Amazon anymore, by the way. And actually there's a replacement model, it doesn't look anything like them. When I sit, and I need a table that isn't going to break, in the right listening position, because the couch is further back right now. If I sit here, and I'm in a roughly 10 foot triangle, because the GoPro warps everything, this room can now, with the subwoofers tuned to match the 12, and the 12 set just right so that I could add in more of that horn, this room could now officially compete with any room I've heard at Rocky Mountain or Capital Audio Fest or fucking New York Audio Show because that's the sort of levels we're talking about. It took, it took effort, it took work. And Klipsch is basically handing you a Lego set and saying, here you go, and it's gonna be a glorious, put it, you just put it on the floor, it's done. It's done, you could be done. You could be done with this. You don't have to watch this part of the review. You buy the set, leave it on the floor, you're happy. But if you wanna reach up to the skies like I have, And I don't want to just keep playing dead mouse and people think, oh, this guy's just fucking, he just, that's all he does. I, let me see if I could shuffle to something more, uh, I would say appropriate. It's kind of super. Oh, no. This is actually going to have a lot of... I've listened to tracks in complete darkness with just these tweaked, separate the tweeters so that you could get them at the right level, negative four, negative five decibels, 
Bring those subs up to match. Don't overlap too much. And I could not see doing the rest of this quarantine without these speakers. I love my ohms. I love all the speakers on my wall. There's, there are different flavors of ice cream. And these speakers are the most audiophile sounding pieces of ice cream I've ever had. The sprinkles are just, the sprinkles are just banana plugs made of like silver compounds. They hit you with the 12 inch because there's no just replacement for displacement. I, I, I think I started the video with that. And when you have like a six inch speaker, that's how much is pushing that air towards you. And when you get an eight inch speaker, that's, that's pushing the air towards you. Those are an eight, but those are an eight Omni. So they're not really pushing it at you as much as just making the air around there do something. A 10 inch speaker, wow, you're talking about, that's severe. That's like MT-110, that's a uh, PS, no, that wasn't PS Audio, that was, uh, who was that? PSA, which is Power Sound Audio, which is not PS Audio, it's, it's, it's you gotta learn. But these, these are a 12. These are a 12. And when you look at it, you, you, you immediately think they're gonna be bassy. Like, oh, you don't need a subwoofer with those. You abso-fucking-lutely do. And I'm glad. The other Forte 3s that I reviewed, the Klipsch Fortes, what were my problems with them? You remember? I remember. I thought they were too low. The whole speaker sat about this high, which is much taller than this on the floor. But still, when you sit this high and you put the tweeters here, that's still not, that's a foot off. So I raised the Forte threes up. And the Forte threes could do low end. They had that big 15 inch in the back. 15 inch passive radiator just shot sound backwards. And I was like, wow. But I still put a subwoofer on. So the benefit of the Fortes here is that you actually need a subwoofer. I don't want to have a speaker that's trying to do low end and is almost succeeding, you could argue is better. But if you could just give me a speaker that can produce this sort of slapping sound tunnel right at you, and then you add in whatever subwoofers you want. I don't care. Whatever, just SVS, Rhythmics, just throw them. These are Infinities I have down here, by the way, which used to be powered, but now they're powered by the crown over there because the, one of the amplifiers had a weirdness and I just, done. I would not want Klipsch to change anything about these. Because if they said, wait, 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 we could, we could redesign this so that it can throw more low end. Don't. I wanted to throw this exact amount of low end. Hold on, I'm gonna go to Glenn Burroughs. Because I know no matter what they do to that passive speaker, once you have an active speaker in the mix, an active subwoofer, you can more accurately represent. Uh, the theme of Glenn Burroughs from the Megalobox OST. That will never come from a speaker. Never, ever, ever, ever. Maybe like a $25,000 pair of self-powered speakers, which I did hear those at Capital Audio Fest. I'll see if I could, I need to get those to borrow too, because those did room correction. But once you admit to the fact that you're gonna need subwoofers, well then you don't have to worry about anything down there. Anything in 50 Hertz or 62 Hertz, it's all about the speaker from there up. And then through no fault of Klipsch's own, the crossover network, or however they designed the, the drivers in this, they just can't, they can't scale to the sort of volume they're capable of. You know from looking at that, that that can get loud. You know that that 12 inch, even playing this song, as loud as it is, and I am, I only have a couple clicks before I'm at, four decibels before I'm at the absolute point where I think I might damage something. Look how much the driver moves. <laughs> nothing there it doesn't move it barely shakes when a speaker moves this much it's not doing anything when a speaker's doing this when you watch me do a subwoofer review or a little the mica rb42s so when that speaker is flinging itself in and out number one it's slower because in order to move the same amount of air as a 12 inch a 4 inch would have to move about that far in and out that's just fucking facts 
In fact, someone can do this math in the description, in the comments. Right, boys? Here we go. Let's just, for argument's sake, to say that it is a 12-inch diameter, and it is going to move approximately forwards and backwards. I'll make this in, in, in millimeters for the sake of our my much larger out-of-the-US audience. We're going to move six millimeters back and forth with a 12-inch diameter. So now I have to use both metric and imperial, because I'm a dick. Well, now, reduce that to a four-inch diameter driver and tell me how far that four-inch dynamic, dynamic driver would have to move in and out to move the exact same volume of air that a 12-inch has to move for six millimeters. That's three back and three forward. How much back and forward would a four-inch need to do to make this happen? And if you want extra credit, you could do it for a five and a quarter, a six, and an eight, and a 10. It's, no, it's a lot. So when I sit in my listening position, with these speakers turned up, um, this is the best my living room has ever sounded. This is it. This is it. Chewbacca, you hear it? I hear it. It's, it's not even close to other speakers. There, there's, no, there's nothing I could look at on my wall and go, oh, you know what? Those sort of sound like a, like a little version of, no, no, no. Boot cards, no. The boot cards on their own go lower. They go much lower, down to almost under 40 hertz, and those sound huge. But you know what a six and a half inch can't compete with? It can't, it just, it can't, it can't. These are the absolute maximum size speaker I think I can keep. Zeos do tower speakers, Zeos do tower speakers, why? Even if, the, if you converted this to a tower speaker, it wouldn't be that wide. You wouldn't be able to get the tweeter, the uh, horn that wide. You'd have to already compromise it. And then you could divide up the 12 inch into several other speakers. And then, you know, that would give you the exact same amount of volume according to the math you guys just did. Thank you for doing the math, by the way. And you'd have this long array of sound. And then you'd have to adjust the size of the box and the porting to try to... The point of these speakers, what makes this great, is that all the sound that I'm hearing is coming from almost the smallest... The fact that they cut the horn, you see the horn has a box shape, but right here it doesn't, they cut it. Because they took away fucking a centimeter of plastic to get this speaker one centimeter closer. One centimeter closer. Just... I'm amazed that this doesn't completely overlap that to try to squeeze as much space away from the whole thing as possible. Because this hand that I'm holding represents the focal point of the sound. A tower speaker, yes, could put three drivers down there, but then you're getting that much space. And then the time alignment slightly off. These, these, these are the ultimate bookshelf speaker. And you're not putting them on a bookshelf, so they shouldn't be called that. But they're basically the ultimate bookshelf speaker. And I'm a huge proponent of bookshelf speakers. Number one, you basically are always gonna be required to get a sub with a bookshelf. Number two, once you get a sub, you really don't have to worry about getting the low end, so that means you could hold the driver's back, seal the box, push even harder. And these push hard with no effort at all. I'd put you back on there, baby, but you're the reason I got a scratch because I thought you put dirt on it. I love these speakers. Like, love them. Like, I don't, I definitely do not need to, to, to own them, but I do now. I'm okay with Steve Gutenberg's sloppy seconds, the same pair Steve Gutenberg had. In fact, they came from his apartment in Brooklyn to my apartment, and now I own them, so I'm officially owner of Steve's sloppy seconds. And I couldn't be any happier. I've, I don't think I've ever spent this much energy setting a speaker up. Because I've set up my ohms and I obsessively move them and turn them and then play with the crossover between the speaker and the subs. And it's like, all right. But I, I, I literally destroyed these in my mind. I ripped them apart. I ripped apart the 12 inch. I play with the mini D. Mm, I'm going to take the mini DSP out for a second for you guys, all right? I don't, I don't show everybody my mini DSP, but when I do, 
So, I might as well walk up to it. This is not another review of a mini DSP, and I'm not saying everyone needs to do this to enjoy these speakers. I'm just showing you the lengths that I went because of the potential energy that was locked in these to get it out. So here, I don't have any crossovers enabled. All you have to see is that I have that amplifier, which is getting fed from that JDS Labs ELDAC at negative five decibels. And then the main left and right for the, the big, since it's a much more powerful amplifier, that's at negative 14 decibels. And then the subwoofer, well, there's my crossover for the subwoofer. Cutting off at 55 hertz, it starts its down angle, and that's where the 12 inch cuts off. Which, where do I have that set? It should be roughly the same. The 12 inch is getting crossovered at 50 hertz. It starts, it starts the curve. It actually starts a downturn at about 110. 110 and below, it starts the curve. And then you add the subs. Now I could shut off the subs. Keeping the same configuration, I could literally disable the subwoofers, which means it's just those two now. And that same song we just played, which I could back up to the beginning again is. It slaps, but it doesn't really hit home. Now, when I started this review, and when I did the sound demo, honestly, because that was before, the sound demo came way before I started playing with this thing. And put the subs back on because it's, it's, it's a requirement by law. <sighs> when I do the sound demo and everything, it's all just one speaker, it's on the floor. It's, it's just, that's what it is. It's just what it is. So you're gonna hear that sound demo and you're gonna hear what the tweeters, I guess tweeter, mid-range horn, and then mid-bass driver, because I'm not gonna call it a bass driver. Although it is officially bass, it's just not sub-bass. And that's what I think people are gonna be thinking it is, it's not. It's not, this is not a 12 inch from the back of your car that makes the Honda windows rattle. This is, this is a giant, giant sound radiator. And those fill in the gaps. In fact, if you want to hear something interesting, because I'm, if I'm nothing else, I'm an interesting guy. Nakatomi Plaza, Panic at the Disco, Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm, I will shut off the subwoofers. I'll shut off everything but the tweeters. How's that? Subwoofers off, 12 inch off. We'll give, I'll give a little demonstration, only through the GoPro. I'm not gonna go nuts. So here is just the horns. Is this just fantasy? Not quite enjoyable. So let's reverse it. Let's just do the 12 inch. Let's take those off. Put these off. So that's a sort of separation. Now that isn't affected by me. There's no equalization I put between the two. That's just what naturally these clips do. Those, that horn and that treble are just very high. And this comes in and is the entire, it's the entire reason these sound good is that 12 inch. This is all icing on, this specifically is icing on top. Where it cuts off from this to that is where the music comes from. And it's why I think they sound better than most speakers I've heard. Cause you're just, you're just offloading so much to that 12 inch, just so much that it can just, I'll, I'll skip through another. I mean, you can't even tell what's playing anymore. Fight on the wing. Mina. I, I can't even tell if I want to listen to any of these songs. What is this? Luca Vito and. Wow. Ludo Vico Ainuaudi Monday. So let's add the treble back in. That side first. Now that side. Now let's unmute the subs, which are obviously not required for this particular track. But once you get everything lined up, once I got everything lined up, 
and I took it out of its, it's like it comes in a protective case of sitting on the floor and only being powered by one amp. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Put, a, put your jacket up, you add a sub, you disconnect, and you could just get, you don't have to deal with a mini DSP for what I'm talking about here, ladies and gentlemen. You could just get, if you're gonna spend $3,000 on a pair of speakers, and you're gonna buy a peach tree amp or put it next to your turntable, you could deal with it with just one. If in the future you were like, you know what, Zeos was right, when I turn this up a lot, the, the, the 12 inch sort of gets lost and I'm just getting all that horn. Buy another amplifier, a small, I'm using a $130 SMSL with Infineon drivers from Germany. I love that amp by the way. And I'm just feeding it. You could just take an amp, put it on top of your other amp, run the signal from one to the other. You don't have to do anything else that's special. Disconnect the bridges in the back of the speaker, plug the uppers into another amp and the bottom, and then all you got, if you did this without a preamp, you'd have two volume knobs and that would be sort of annoying. But it's it's doable. It is very doable. You could, and that, in fact, it might even be a cooler experience because you would just set the volume you want for the 12 and then turn the, the horns up. A little more and you're good. It's kind of like when you get one of those um, old Stax energizers and the left and right are completely separate volume knobs. You always have to turn the left and right up separately. You always have to balance it every time. And maybe you won't be consistent every time, but you're gonna go, this song, this song needs a little more sparkle and you get it. Now, if you have subwoofers involved too, now we're talking about something where you need like an entire other knob for subwoofers and then you really want a master knob. It doesn't matter. The way you saw these, video, these speakers at the beginning of this video is either going to sell you them or not sell you them. Chicken wings. All right, that's it. That's, I'm, my chicken wings are, are ready to go. So, I just said the word chicken wings. I didn't even bring, mm. Chicken wings finished, battery died, and my cat knew about it. And I put the grills back on. Uh, th that, the second half's been 32 minutes already. I don't know if I can tell you any more about these speakers. They're, they just are. They just are beautiful in their simplicity. They're, they're old school as, like, I'll talk about the grill in the first half, which I'm gonna film after the second half, because I have to rip this all apart and put them on the ground. So I'm doing the second half first. It's gonna be a mind fuck for me. Um, they're, they're, they're my, they're, they might be my perfect, as much as those ohms can come in and just, you know, I'll be perfectly satisfied. I've not been as impressed by speakers in a long, long enough to ask, long enough to own them, in a long time. Anyway, I'm wrapping it up. Sound demo for these in the description. Like I said, that sound demo is no subs, no cross, no separation of the upper and lower. It's just raw speaker on the floor. Enjoy that. Uh, if you want to see these reviews early or support this channel, the five dollar tiers on Subscribestar and Patreon allow you to do that up to a week early or more, depending on how I'm doing during fucking Corona quarantine. Um, by the way, if you're watching this in the far future, that was a thing we had in 2020 where everyone was like, oh my God, we're all gonna die. And people were actually dying. But I think we're over it now, right? It's 2023 when you're seeing this video and it's just, everything's peachy. Economy didn't crash. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to 2023 when everything's fucking peachy. Um, other benefits of the $5 tiers are ask me any questions you want on platform. It usually takes me a week to get back to everybody because there's like 40 in there right now. And yard sales. If I get something, if I buy something or I get it from a company or someone donates it to the channel, I will put it in a yard sale. First to the 10th of every month, I just sell 10, 12 items. Usually they're smaller items, IEMs, portable players, some headphones. Sometimes the speakers will not be these speakers. Uh, if you want to go above the $5 tier, the $10 tiers on either platform will get you into a private behind the scenes Telegram chat where they already know that I own these and they already know that I love them and they already are asking me questions about well, what's the size and fitment and what amplifier do you recommend because those people are the 
they are the ones that pay my rent. So if you want to go talk to them and lose even more money, then the, trust me, that $10 investment will cost you thousands, thousands, but I highly recommend it. Um, that's that. So support this channel if you'd like. If you'd like to talk about these speakers, there should be a post on Hi-Fi Guides form. Hi-Fi Guides is the site I run with DMS. That's like a buying guide, so it looks like PC Part Picker. And it's all audio. And these will probably be on there, I don't know, about $3,000. The slider only goes up to 2000 but you know, we'll see. And the form attached to that is, is Really nice. I, I, I approve of it highly. I don't participate enough. I apologize for that. Oh, and if you're going to ask about the lights before I end, those were an IKEA product that was 12 volt and they no longer make it. It's now 24 volt. Instead of having like that many LEDs, it has like half as many. Oh, and by the way, I cut it in half and split it up because it was about 12 inches long and not six. We're going to do a lot of metric and we're going to have every measurement standard. I like to look at the temperature in Kelvin for those of you who don't know. Anyway, that's it. Welcome to my living room. These are my new speakers and I'm going to go listen, literally going to go listen to them. Well, actually now I'm going to take them apart and put them on the floor and film the first half of this. It's going to be fun. <laughs>